Are either sex or masturbation risk factors for prostate cancer? These are questions I want to get into amongst other things in this video, so stay tuned. With the great majority of our subscriber base being males, prostate health is a hot topic of interest. And we create many different videos here on the channel. And one particular subject matter that always comes up is whether or not sex, masturbation, or specifically ejaculation is actually a risk factor for prostate cancer and disease, or is it a preventative factor in prostate cancer? So I wanna dive into this in a bit more detail because I have a couple of different scientific studies that I want to talk about and share with you guys in this video that will sort of peel back the layers for this particular question or concern. But I also have other underlying information that I want to share with you first. So everything I'm going to get into is going to ultimately come back to one of the primary causative factors of prostate cancer, which is a hormonal imbalance typically involving low androgens, so low testosterone, low DHT, not elevated levels of androgens, and actually a elevation of estrogen and prolactin. So this is sort of the opposite of the conventional viewpoint. In the conventional viewpoint, DHT and testosterone are often blamed for being the causes, the major cause of prostate cancer and enlargement. So before we continue any further and get into these studies, I just want to lay that groundwork out and let it be understood that from our perspective at least, and we've dove into this in greater detail in other videos, that it's not testosterone or DHT causing prostate cancer, a deficiency of it might, but actually the opposing feminizing hormones, estrogen and prolactin, that cause the hypertrophy of the prostate through many different mechanisms. So if you'd like to learn more about that, definitely reference these other videos first or after you watch this video. With that being said, let's dive into some of the science, what actually has been studied and what we know about the phenomenon that is sex, how it affects our physiology, as well as how masturbation or specifically ejaculation affects the physiology, and then piece this all together tied it into the underlying causative factors of low testosterone and high estrogen and prolactin, ultimately coming to the conclusion of whether or not you should be worried about sex and masturbation as increasing your risk for prostate cancer or potentially lowering your risk for it. So getting right into it, I have a couple of different studies that I wanna share first before we piece all this information together. Looking at one study on the correlation between prostate cancer and sex or sexual intercourse, it was found that men who slept with more than 20 women were not only markedly less likely to get any type of prostate cancer, but actually experienced a 19% reduction in diagnosis with aggressive types of prostate cancer. Now, the amount of women is not what is important here in this study. It wasn't sexual promiscuity that decreased the risk factor for prostate cancer, but tying this study into another study, as seen here, in general, just men who ejaculated more frequently than others had a significant decreased likelihood of developing prostate cancer. On the other hand, it it's been found in additional studies that men who go long durations without sex or ejaculation, in many cases, many years, that inflammatory cells and other substances can actually accumulate in the seminal vesicles, which is adjacent to the prostate, which can eventually lead to cancer because ultimately cancer is really an inflammatory condition or one of the many symptoms of chronic inflammation. So to recap really quickly before we continue any further down the rabbit hole of scientific studies here, basically what we are coming to find is that there's an inverse relationship with sex and prostate cancer or sex being a risk factor for prostate cancer. Basically, the men who had the most sex and who ejaculated the most frequently had lower incidences of prostate cancer than those who basically abstain from sex for long periods of time or who didn't have sex. Now, just from a practical viewpoint alone, this makes sense, at least to me, because the men who end up developing prostate cancer are typically elderly men who haven't had sex for many, many, many years. Their sex life is practically non-existent. So the basic way to look at this, I think, already is that sex, in the words of my mentor, is the greatest adaptogen. 
So like anything else, like sunlight, like food and water, like certain herbs, basically the poison is in the dose. Not enough sex can make you feel tired, fatigued. It can result actually in low testosterone in an increased risk of developing various cancers or specifically prostate cancer. But on the other hand, too much sex and too much ejaculation or sexual intercourse is going to drain and deplete you. And we have additional studies and information that confirm this as well. Looking at this first study on the correlation between testosterone and sexual intercourse, it was found that out of a group of 11 people, I think, over the course of 11 days, that every time after sex, testosterone levels increased. And by the 11th day, when there was no sexual intercourse, testosterone levels actually decreased parallel to the non-sexual activity. So this study basically confirms that sex can actually have a testosterone boosting effect. Ejaculation or no ejaculation, sexual intercourse increases testosterone. Now this makes sense to me because testosterone is the hormone that gives you drive and motivation. Physiologically speaking, it is the basic hormone for reproduction or procreation and what drives a man more than sex. So looking both at the science and common sense, to me, it makes perfect sense why sexual intercourse would boost your testosterone levels. But now the question is, what about frequent sex? Frequent many ejaculations, will this lead to a testosterone decline? Well, in one way it might, but it'd be very, very insignificant. And this is due to the fact that semen, ejaculatory fluid does contain some zinc, which is an important trace mineral for the production of testosterone. However, keep in mind it is a very, very small amount of the zinc that is circulating throughout your body being turned into testosterone, producing dopamine and doing whatever else that zinc is necessary for doing in the body. So maybe over the long term, maybe over many, many, many years of every single day ejaculating multiple, multiple times a day, this might lead to a testosterone decline or deficiency. However, it's going to be, again, very, very insignificant compared to the amount of testosterone that is being elevated or boosted through healthy sexual intercourse. In fact, looking at some of the research on testosterone and masturbation, on one hand, abstaining from masturbation for up to seven days can increase testosterone levels by 45%. But if you can continue this any longer, it can have an adverse effect, a diminishing returns. And again, this is because of the adaptogenic quality or nature of sex. Just the right amount of abstaining from sex or masturbation could increase testosterone levels, especially if you're an already stressed out person. However, a generally healthy person, if you abstain from masturbation or sex or ejaculation for too long, again, you're going to hit this point of diminishing returns, where the abstinence of sexual intercourse and ejaculation might lead to a testosterone decline. So bringing all of this full circle, what do we know? That sexual intercourse in a healthy mannerism, in a normal, non-excessive way, actually is going to significantly boost testosterone, which has been shown to prevent or decrease the risk of prostate cancer, again, likely through its pro-testosterone effects. Because remember, one of the underlying causative factors to prostate cancer is low testosterone. We also know that the people that have the least amount of sex have significantly increased risks for prostate cancer and lower testosterone. And looking at the last piece of the puzzle, masturbation, non-sexual intercourse related ejaculation usually, can actually have very little effect on your testosterone levels whatsoever, unless of course you go at least seven days with abstaining from masturbation, but hopefully not too much longer after that. So there is a peak point of interest when it comes to abstaining from ejaculation. So what does this mean? What does this look like in practice? If we piece all of the data together, I would say first and foremost, do not try to abstain from sexual intercourse. Just make sure it's healthy. And for me, healthy sex is with somebody that you truly and deeply love. So I'm not supporting entire abstinence, but I'm also not supporting sexual promiscuity. For me, there is a middle path, and that is healthy sexual intercourse with somebody you truly love, that you're honest and have honorable feelings towards. So the other thing though is from this point is of course to not be excessive or chronic with it.
We have learned that slight masturbation, abstination can actually lead to an increase in testosterone, but also going too long without sex can have the adverse effect. So what does this tell us? That there is a middle ground, that probably having a certain amount of sex throughout the week is going to have the most beneficial effect on your testosterone, likely boosting it. So there's tons of different formulas and stuff out there that you can do. You can take, I believe, like your age and multiply it by certain numbers and come to this ideal number of how many times you should ejaculate per week. But I think the basic way to go off this is to, first and foremost, again, make sure that you're cultivating healthy sexual relationships so that way you don't have an increased reliance on masturbation and that could potentially lead to some sort of compulsion there where you're ejaculating too much for what is normal or healthy from that point as long as you're not trying to completely suppress your sexual energy and never have sex and you know never try to masturbate or any of these things from that point if you have a healthy relationship with somebody that you care about i would say the basic way to govern this is to go off of your basic energy levels so if you're becoming depleted tired and exhausted after sex, that's probably a good sign that you're either having too much or that you're generally stressed altogether. Remember, sex is an adaptogen. The right amount will give you energy. If you're drained from having sex, you're either having too much of it or you're not having enough. And it's really that simple. So to conclude, sex, good. It's going to boost your testosterone levels, granted that you're doing it in a normal and healthy amount, and ejaculation isn't excessive. So if you like to have a lot of sex, you might want to practice retaining some of your semen. So basically having sex, reaching orgasm without ejaculating. Otherwise, if you're having a moderate amount of sex per day or per week, then you probably don't have to necessarily worry about that again, unless you're becoming exhausted after every time you have sex and ejaculate. And in regards to prostate cancer, if you look again at the people that tend to have the highest rates of prostate cancer, they're typically older men who haven't had sex for 10 plus years. So I'd say that in that way alone, sex is definitely a preventative therapy for prostate cancer. Again, granted that it's just not excessive. Anyways, we've been getting a lot of questions on this particular topic, so I figured I'd finally make the video, and here it is. If there's anything I left out that you wanna know about, just leave a question in the comment section below and I'll be sure to answer it, but hopefully I have answered your questions. If you're interested in learning more about prostate health and what you can do to prevent prostate diseases and improve the health of the prostate, definitely reference our other videos here on the channel. Otherwise, that does bring this video to a close. If you've enjoyed it and found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for future videos if you haven't already. And if you're interested in learning more beyond our channel, check out our blog and our online tonic herb shop in the description box below.